a lot of basic probability questions will involve the use of either a fair coin, a fair die, or a fair deck of cards. So we want to establish just briefly what these different ideas mean so that we know when we use that language, a fair coin, a fair die, a fair deck of cards, we know what we're working with. So a fair coin has two sides, heads and tails, each of which is equally likely to occur. So as soon as we see that language fair coin, we can assume that's the case. There are two outcomes, again, typically heads and tails, equally likely to occur, so the probability is 50-50. A fair die <clears throat> has six sides, unless the problem states um, some different number. But however many sides there are, each of those sides are equally likely to occur. So there are six outcomes, and each of those are equally likely to occur. So the probability of any individual number occurring when we roll that die is one, one sixth. And then we have a fair deck of cards, which has 52 total cards. And again, each of these is equally likely to occur. Now the deck of cards is a little more complicated because within those 52 cards, we have some breakdowns, different types of cards. So for instance, we have in a fair deck of cards, four suits, which consist of clubs and spades. So we have those two black suits and we have two red suits, hearts and diamonds. Each suit is gonna have three face cards which includes a jack, a queen, and a king. Separate from that, when we talk about a fair deck for our purposes, our purposes, we have one ace in each suit. So in some games, an ace gets lumped in with the face cards. Other times, it gets lumped in at the low end of the deck. So we want to make that distinction. Face cards and the aces are separate. And then we have the numbers 2 through 10. Again, for each of those different suits. So each set has this specific breakdown, which comes to a total of 13 cards for each suit. So 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13 hearts, 13 diamonds gives us that total of 52 cards. So let's use those definitions of what we mean by fair for each of those different items and answer some different probability questions. So first, what's the probability of flipping a fair coin three times and getting tails exactly twice? <clears throat> so to answer this question, we need to first construct a sample space. So we're going to flip a fair coin three times. We need to list the different possible outcomes. So for instance, on the first flip, we could get heads. On the second flip, we could get heads. And on the third flip, third flip, we could get heads. So that's one possible outcome. Or we could get heads, heads, tails. We could get heads, tails, heads. Tails, heads, and then heads. We could also get three tails in a row. Tails, tails, and then heads. Tails, heads, tails, and heads, tails, tails. So those are our different possible outcomes for flipping a coin three times. And what we want is the probability of tails exactly twice. So we just need to look at the sample space and identify any possibilities here where we would get tails exactly twice. And it turns out to be just these three different cases. So the probability of getting tails exactly twice is three out of the eight possible different combinations. In part B, what's the probability of flipping a fair coin three times 
and not getting tails exactly twice. So this statement is basically the complement of what we had in part A. So we can take 1 minus 3 eighths to get 5 eighths using that complement rule. Or we could come back to our sample space and circle all the possibilities where we don't get tails exactly twice. <clears throat> and in this case, we have five different possibilities out of the eight total where we don't get exactly two tails. So either using the complement rule or going back to the sample space, we can answer a question like that. In part C, what's the probability of rolling a fair die and getting an even number? So if we again look at our sample space, we could get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And what we're interested in are the even numbers. So in this case, 2, 4, and 6. So our probability is 3 out of 6, or 1 half, 50%. Now a slightly different question, what's the probability of rolling a fair die and getting an odd number? or a number greater than 2. So we could write our sample space again. And now we're interested in odd numbers. So 1, 3, or 5. But we're also interested if we get an odd or if we get a number greater than 2. So 3 and 5, those are both greater than 2. We already have those circled. 4 and 6 are both greater than 2. So now we have all of the odd numbers and all of the numbers greater than 2, which gives us a probability of 5 out of 6. In part E, what's the probability of drawing a black card from a fair deck of cards? So again, assuming all of the cards are equally likely, we just need to come up with the number of ways we can draw a black card out of the total number of cards. So out of 52 cards, how many black cards are there? We have 13 clubs plus 13 spades, which gives us 26 out of 52, or 1 half, a 50-50 chance. What's the probability of drawing a black face card from a fair deck of cards? So we're still drawing out of 52. How many black face cards are there? Well, we have three black face cards, or three face cards that are spades, plus three face cards that are clubs which gives us a probability of 6 out of 52, or 3 26ths.